welcome you back to Seattle at the Husky Soccer Field, getting set for today's matchup between Oregon State, 5 and 11, 1 and 5 in the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation, Washington 11, 4 and 2, and 6 and 0 in MPSF play. The Huskies trying to keep their unblemished record against Oregon State, 11, 0 and 1. The last meeting in 1998 going in Washington's favor, 6 0 in Corvallis. We take a look at the starting lineup for the Oregon State Beavers and their first year coach, Dana Taylor. Brian Hill will start in the nets. A back four of Groom, Maroney, Foster, and Wisenflu. Kirk, Roth, Ryan Smith, and Aaron McCarty from Vancouver, British Columbia with dual citizenship. He's played as a Jamaican under 20 uh, international. There is a look at Brian Hill, the keeper for Oregon State. A 2.36 goals against average. He leads, that's not a stat he really would like to have necessarily. Means they're taking a lot of shots on him, but he leads the Mountain Division with 89 saves this season. And the starting lineup for Washington under head coach Dean Wurzberger in his eighth year. James Dickinson will start as a keeper, but they'll make a switch at halftime expected. Scott Grazier gets a start in the back four today as Bryn Ritchie sits with his fifth yellow. McCoy, Tallman, and Sleeth with the rest of the back. Hart, Casali, Carroll, and Somoza in the midfield. And Foise running up front with Jake Sagar. A look at James Dickinson, the senior from Bellingham. A 1.25 goals against average. He has been the starter in six out of the last seven games now for the Huskies, as you see his marks. And his career goals against average is a 1.19 goals against average. He has two shutouts so far this year. As we mentioned, Dana Taylor, the first year coach at Oregon State after being an assistant at Creighton. He'll take on Dean Wurzberger, who's ready to get the Huskies back to the NCAAs. We'll have the kickoff after this. And you can see clouds overhead, but the sun trying to burn its way through. A good day, though, for soccer. A dry one as well as we welcome you back to the Husky soccer field. In the middle of your screen, the man in the middle, Mohammed Zarabi Kashani, will be calling today's game. Fred Mabbitt and Jeff Jarvis are the assistant referees. In the mid-50s. Very mild breeze so far, much less though than we've had many times here at the Husky Soccer Stadium. In fact, uh, very calm right now just before kickoff. And the pessimists in the Weather Bureau say there's a chance of rain. Those of us who are optimistic are hoping we'll get our full 90 minutes in and remain dry. It's been a good year for soccer in that regard. The Beavers in their road orange uniforms. You can see the Huskies in their home whites out on the field today. Co-captain and the senior, one of five seniors honored before today's kickoff, Wes Hart. Was selected as the league player of the week after that last performance against Cal and Stanford. Greg Foise also up on the front today. And Reese Bettinger will get a start now as well. The senior starting on the front line. Dean Wurzberger in his eighth season as the head coach at Washington. His second Mountain Division title wrapped up. Two overall league championships. Dana Taylor in his first year at OSU was an assistant for four years at Creighton. They went to the NCAAs in each of those four years, including a Final Four appearance in 1996. And we immediately have our first whistle of the game as Jake Sagari has brought, Sagar rather, excuse me, is brought down. And the Huskies have an excellent opportunity just outside the box. And this is where Benjamin Samoza does a great job. Uh, having said that, Michael Casali can also uh, hit the ball like a rocket from these distances. So uh, uh, goalkeeper Brian Hill could be brought into action right away. This is a very, very good situation for the Huskies uh, in the early stages of this game. Little discussion here as Casali stands behind it. Hart, Samoza, Casali striking it off the wall, deflection and just in. Did it go? Yes. And it's, it's, it's definitely a goal. The goalkeeper yes. actually let it go. Could have saved it. Uh, terrible mistake believe. by Brian Hill there. Yeah, he let it go wide. And you couldn't tell for a moment with the spare ball sitting back there 
which it was, but it tucked itself into the net. 55 seconds into the game, the Huskies are on the board. They've got a combination of people who take a shot. It did number seven on the back of the shoulder there. Uh, goalkeeper probably could have got it, let it go in the end. Uh, uh, goal will be credited to, to Michael Casale, who, uh, who I said earlier could hit the ball uh, really well. Uh, I'm sure they were expecting Benjamin Somoza to take it, but Casale was a late last minute for you there and scored. Well, officially they rule it no assist on the play as well, and you see Somoza down. And uh, Brian Hill, he, that was uh, reminiscent, I think, of a... Uh, David Seaman goal for uh, or goalie gave up for Arsenal remember back in the European competition he just kind of gave up on the ball and it went in the problem when a goalkeeper uh, makes an error like that it's almost always the goal when a forward player makes that kind of error it's just forgotten immediately another restart for the Huskies a flick on into the box and Hill well off his line to come out and try to stop that one Jake Sagar the sophomore on the ball that time well, Washington couldn't have hoped for much more. They try to get into the attack early, and they score one in the opening minute. Sagar on the attack again, beats two defenders. Great cross, headed clear that time. Volleyed back in and covered by Smith. That was a difficult ball to handle there. West Hart hit a very strong shot from way out. Uh, Brian Hill uh, uh, held it fairly well uh, in the end, uh, but he got his body behind it, which was good. Huskies are playing 4-3-3. Uh, Oregon are playing uh, four at the back, four in the midfield, one up the front, and Greg Howes will be playing uh, uh, behind the front man. Flag up on the near side. They say that Bettinger was off. Uh, frankly, I thought he was on that time, but... You know what they say, Todd, uh, the, the assistant... Referee of the best position, and Jeff Jarvis, who's a good uh, good referee, he's a good linesman too. He's also a soccer player, so he understands the game. And uh, saw offside, put his flag up. Yep, he got a long look from Reese, but he's not going to win that one at all. Well, Hill will have to uh, kind of settle himself down a little bit here as the Huskies are challenging. Beavers trying to get a little run here for the first time. A nice touch into the box, cleared as Justin Kirk had penetrated the Husky defense momentarily. Now out to Weisenflu. He'll look long. That's marked well by the Huskies. Volleyed back out again by Billy Sleeth. He releases getting the ball from Somoza. Bettinger. Reese playing with a little bit of speed here, too. We see good pace from him early on, Alan. He, he's, he's got good speed and he's very strong and he obviously is looking to break out of his uh, goal scoring slump today. He, uh, he hasn't got a point all year and the coaching staff of the University of Washington would love Reese to break out and uh, real, really get some uh, big, big time goals now as we go towards the tournament. Back post, no one there for Washington on the cross by Greg Foise, but they'll get possession momentarily again. Somebody keeps blowing a whistle off the field. It's really throwing people. Through again as Bettinger let it roll. No one there on the backside, and it'll be a throw in to Washington. Well, Dean Wurzberger shifted to a little bit more of an attacking alignment as we get a look at Greg Foise and Allen. The Huskies have all sorts of pressure here in the opening minutes. And the Huskies have got all sorts of speed. And, uh, and a big throw here from Somoza. It is a big throw. Cleared back there by Groom. Hart, nice job there to just lay it back to McCoy. A little bit uh, wild there, and Sagar can't control. Throw into Oregon State. The Huskies have had to make one change today. Uh, Bryn Ritchie uh, is not able to play because of too many yellow cards. Allen, here we see that the Huskies moving the ball around, and the cross here is Foise keeps it going. Foise has got a lot of speed on the outside and, uh, and a good run there from the left side might have uh, created a better opportunity for the Huskies. Nobody coming through up top that time. And the Huskies had another opportunity there on the run by Foise. Now Ryan Smith controlling in midfield. Good cut back there by Howes. Gets it to the left in the first save for James Dickinson. Good play there by Greg Howes. He's a talented player. A lot of the uh, creativity comes through Greg in the midfield and of course Greg's able to get uh, uh, goals and make goals and he's a very influ influential player for uh, the Beavers. Little battle here as Ryan Foster loses possession. Sleeth getting it out of the back and a good run by Bettinger. 
as he marks up with Weisenflu. It'll be a throw in to Washington. Bettinger, the quick retake behind Foise for a moment. Bettinger trying to get around his defender. Whistle, and they're going to call Bettinger that time. And a free kick to Oregon State. They're look again at the senior from Bellevue Christian High School. 68 career points. But as Alan mentioned, none yet this season. We watch his contact again in the back. And a wise and flu marking him well enough and then drawing the contact. And now Sleep giving a little bit of pressure, finds Foise. Uh, Billy Sleep didn't play in the last game. He, uh, he has a back uh, problem. And uh, he's able to play today. And I think the coaches of the University of Washington are hoping Billy comes through uh, without uh, too much pain from a sore back. Nice job by Nathan Maroney shielding Hart away from the ball. Now McCoy chesting this one back to his keeper. Dickinson losing balance a little bit at the top of the box, but manages to hang on. We have a battle of a couple of uh, long kicking keepers as well today. In fact, uh, Brian Hill scored a goal earlier this season in Colorado Springs up against the Air Force on a kick from out of the box that carried long. An unassisted goal for the keeper. Sleeth under some pressure now in the back corner. Justin Kirk marking him there. Now a chance for Scott Tedder. Foise bringing it out. Husky throwing. Now he'll leave for Sleeth to take the throw in. The Huskies, well, now Sleeth will lead it for Samoza. So they're going to change it around a couple of times, but that's the man who's got the arm, and you see why they wanted him to take it. Nice job again by Groom to knock it down the defense. Zach Tallman cleaning up at the back for Washington, and it gets through. Far side, Sagar with another run. Got that smothered. And a good job there of winning the ball. Far side for Oregon State. Aaron McCarty with the ball. McCoy coming back with him and earns the throw in. Uh, Oregon uh, State have uh, four freshmen uh, in throwing. the midfield, and obviously, uh, uh, Coach Dana Taylor is looking to the future here. Uh, four freshmen in midfield in a, an important college game like this is, uh, is very much building for the future, which what the, what the coach is doing. Foise was looking for sleep. His run was checked a little bit. Yes, at one point, the Beavers had as many as eight freshmen on the field. There again, look at Dana Taylor. Kevin O'Brien and Ryden Jordan are his assistants. Got a win in his last game out against Cal Poly, and that was a nice win for the Beavers, 6-2. to two. And uh, Dana Taylor did a nice thing today. He uh, he made a third co-captain today, uh, freshman, uh, Ryan Smith, midfield player who he thinks is a very talented player. And obviously he's made him a captain uh, with the intention of uh, increasing his responsibilities uh, next season. Little eye on the future, yes. Washington defense having to backtrack just a bit, but they've been fairly comfortable here in the opening 10 minutes of the game. Hart. Long through ball, Somoza let it carry, and it goes to Groom. Kirk trying to build out, challenged by Sleep. He gives it up to Somoza. Creates a little room for himself now. Foise. Back for Somoza, couldn't quite control, but it falls for Bettinger. Still loose in the box, finally cleared. Ryan Foster getting it out for Oregon State. Sagar on the far side. Near post chip, Bettinger had to get underneath it just a little bit, and it's tipped over the bar by Brian Hill. He was under some pressure from Wes Hart. Uh, Sagar's already uh, proven a handful down the left side, uh, doing a good job for Washington against uh, uh, Oregon State. A corner kick for a Huskies. Alan, ideally, Reese Bettinger would have loved to have that cross about a foot more in front. He had to really arch back to get to it. He really had to stretch, and it was just a touch too high, but he's a superb athlete and uh, almost got there. Brian Hill had to do what he did in terms of touching it over the crossbar for a corner kick. Somoza taking this corner. Hill punching it straight up and gets it on the second attempt. He was under a little bit of pressure again from Sagar. So some uh, shaky moments there for the senior keeper. 
Well, he seems to be playing most of his soccer right now underneath the crossbar, but uh, uh, his first punch was not good, went straight up in there, and then he, he grabbed the ball, and uh, off we go. This is the, the work of Sagar. Yeah, very good cross, uh, just a little bit too high for Reese. And the in swinging corner, Alan. Yeah, Brian Hill should have punched the ball better uh, and was lucky to get a second uh, opportunity that. Huskies penetrating again. Sleeth near the top of the box. Leaves for Somoza. Room stepping in nicely that time. And the Beavers trying to build something back out of the defense. Ben Roth under some pressure. Concedes the ball for a moment but is able to get back to it. Now only as far as Somoza. He hands the ball right back and Ryan Smith able to come out of the midfield. Has a runner now in Justin Kirk. What, what, what? Zach Tallman back to help clean it up. Kirk gets to it, however. Mike, you beware, coming behind late. And he'll let it carry for the quick throw. Tedder looking back post. Header saved Dickinson. Nice run into the box by Aaron McCarty. And on the quick change of direction, Dickinson made a good save. Very good cross from Tedder. Good run by McCarty. And a very good save by James Dickinson low at the far post. Bettinger trying to get up in the air that time and unable to track the ball down. The Beaver is coming up to midfield. Little flick on attempt covered. Good poise right there by Casali. Hart under some pressure finds McCoy. That Oregon, uh, that Oregon play was originally started by uh, a good pass out of midfield by Ryan Smith which resulted in a good cross from uh, from Tedder. And McCarty, who's uh, played on the Jamaican U-20 national team, is from Vancouver, B.C., uh, came in very well and almost scored a goal. Sven Groom with a casual adjustment of the thigh pad as he plays the ball. Battle at midfield, hard able to come out of it after the original challenge. Hill coming into the box finds Groom. Sleeth able to get on the end of Roth's pass. A little extra work by Somoza off the ball to create some space. Hart under some pressure from behind, no whistle, and then has to fight his way back up. Bettinger trying to play Foise on unsuccessfully. Groom a little dangerous pass there. You don't exactly want to go back in front of your goal all the time, but Maroney able to control. Uh, Benjamin Samoza is having a great season for the University of Washington. Is is improving as every game goes by as a responsibility of corner kicks and free kicks and he's having an outstanding season and can only do better. Off McCoy a throw in for Oregon State. There a look at the sophomore from Edmonds Woodway High School. His goals have been big when he's tallied them. All four of his goals have been game winners and he's tied for third in assists overall in the MPSF six assists. Three of them have given game winners. We'll be back with more MPSF action from Seattle right after this timeout on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Seattle, Washington on a first minute goal leading Oregon State. A deflected free kick by Mike Casali, his first goal of the season, fourth of his career. And his first points of the year as well. He's on the ball now. Actually, Michael's hit the post uh, a couple of times this year and has been unfortunate not to have scored earlier. So it's, a, it's appropriate for him to score uh, just, just prior to the tournament. McCoy a little bit of a battle there, but there aren't too many people who are going to beat the senior defender, and he's able to keep the ball away from Howes. And what a good servant Morgan McCoy has been to the University of Washington these past four years. He's a, a co-captain, leader, strong, never say die attitude, always comes to play, injured or not. Morgan's out there on the field doing his best always uh, for the purple. Wes Hart 
On it to Bettinger. Foise marked by Grome. Foise winning that one off the boot. Groom coming back to help. He's been very solid on that left side and has really helped the Beavers out a few times already today. The young man from Trondheim, Norway. Says his favorite player is Jaap Stam. He's playing like him right now, although he's at the left side. Yeah, the difference is that uh, Sven's got some hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Jaap's got more money. So they're, yeah, exactly they're, right. They're maybe Sven's got plenty to come, but... Uh, Sven started off a bit uh, rusty, actually, when uh, Greg Foisey went by him a couple of times, but he seems to be settling down a little what? bit. Now. A chance on a flick here, and Grazier has to come back and clean up as Justin Kirk was pressuring as the Beavers get set to throw in. You can always find out about Beaver Athletics and much, much more weeknights at 7 on Northwest Sports Tonight. The Beavers, the Huskies, the Cougars, the Ducks, the pros, preps, you name it, it comes your way every weeknight at 7 on Northwest Sports Tonight. Volleyed into the area by Kirk and cleared out by Zach Tallman. Kirk waiting for the throw in. Ryan Smith's pass a bit strong for Kirk, but he'll get the throw in once again. As he takes it off of Sleeth. Smith laying it back for Groom. Hart able to get it, but only as far as Wisen flew. Towards the back and a strong header over the bar that time from Greg Howes, but he certainly had a lot of power on that one from the outside. Very good ball from Wisen flew. Uh, diagonals, change of play, sort of pass. Uh, in comes Greg Howes uh, just inside the box. He's a big guy anyway. Very, very powerful header. Uh, unlucky not to score there. Great header from Greg Howes on a very good uh, diagonal ball from uh, uh, Wise and Float. Sleep battling, but Kirk able to step around him for a moment. Samoza helping. Bettinger loves to check back and then help with the buildup, and he's doing a fine job of that here in the opening 18 minutes. Greg Howes is a really big guy. He's got a lovely role on, on this team uh, of Oregon. He, he plays the free role in midfield, and, and he's a powerful player. Allen next to Dean Wurzberger there. We saw Jimmy Gabriel, and uh, Dean had plenty of words to say about him prior to the match today. Well, it's, it, Jimmy's just a great guy. He's a great coach. Uh, Dean uh, is real happy to have uh, Jimmy working with him. Jimmy's the consummate uh, game professional professional seven days a week but when the games are on he knows about situations probably better than everybody in America today. What I liked about it too Dean said that Jimmy is coming up with constant new ideas and sparks and ideas for the program. Well, many years ago when uh, Jimmy was with the Seattle Sounders he actually became a bit of a poet and I think he's probably a bit of a poet and a, and a creative guy when it comes to, uh, to soccer. He's always working on new ideas, little games to try and make practices more uh, better and better and he, he's just a creative uh, genius. Bettinger pushing that one just a bit too far out in front of him that time but Somoza able to get it back again for Washington. Sleeth little overlap on this outside right. He'll work with Foise on a combination. Sleeth you know he wanted to get the ball back. Foise's trying to get it there off of Groom comes to Sleeth and covered Groom with that lanky leg able to get it uh, a little bit higher than everybody else and volley it clear once again. Build up chance here now for OSU as Roth supports the attack. A little bit strong and it'll carry to Dickinson. Hart. Bettinger playing it out wide now for Sleeth. Well, the linesman had originally set a Washington throw in, overruled by the center official. It'll go to Oregon State. And that's the sign of a good referee. When the referee sees that it's the other way, uh, linesman probably didn't have as great a view of that as the referee. And the referee, uh, uh, Mohammed. Immediately gave the ball to Oregon. Good decision, smart referee. Beavers again trying to build up out of the back. Wisen flew controlling there momentarily. Howes coming back to help now. Go, 
Howell's on the ball now, trying to cut to the outside. Little challenge in the box there from Grazier. Play on the call. Bettinger, oh, that's a great ball through for Sagar. Keeper off his line, shot, hit the bar. All he had to do was take a couple miles an hour off of that one, and it was an easy one, but he tried the rocket. However, Allen, creativity from Reese Bettinger. Most guys will send that ball to the outside. He sent it through at an angle that allowed a great run on for Sagar. Well, you can play the ball inside the fullback uh, only if you've got tremendous speed on the outside, and Jake Sagar has got great speed. And he cut inside. Uh, the fullback had to stop, otherwise he would take him out. Uh, and Tremendous shot, hit the underneath of the crossbar. A great run, great play by uh, Washington, and lucky not to score. I said all he had to do was send that one at 75 miles an hour instead of 85. <laughs> he would have had it in the back of the net. Having said that, the game has actually just come alive. Uh, uh, Greg Howes, he was a bit unlucky there. Could have got a penalty kick uh, for OSU, and then all of a sudden, uh, uh, Bettinger played Jake Sagir, uh clear down the left, and, uh, and of course, the ball hit the underneath the crossbar. So the game is now... Uh, seems to have gone up by about 25 percent in terms of energy grazier clearing it out of the central defense once again bettinger with another run sagar challenged he and bettinger able to maintain possession a nice move there to get by the sliding defender and ran out of real estate as he tried to step around ryan foster as well the most amazing thing in terms of statistics is reese bettinger's not being able to get an assist or a goal all year long. That is, it is quite amazing considering uh, Reese has got 27 goals and 14 assists career uh, with the University of Washington. And uh, the fact that he hasn't got a point this year is, is really uh, quite amazing. You saw his average just under a point a game in his career at the university. Midway through the first half here, Washington leading Oregon State by a 1-0 score. The Huskies enjoying a 4-3 shots advantage. You see Greg Howes, who had the best attempt so far for the Beavers. Weizen flew, trying to send that one through. A couple runners were at the back post. Roth trying to get to this one, and it'll be a throw in for Oregon State deep down the sideline. Beavers have spring players open. Smith left alone in the box, threads through. Just couldn't get a turn on at that time for Oregon State, and it's cleared by Foise. Back post and a man running open again. Dickinson up high to take it away from McCarty. And time called now as Oregon State's Justin Kirk was shaken up on the top of the box. But, Alan, uh, at times there, we've seen uh, the Husky defenders be a little bit lackadaisical in terms of just marking up their men. Well, it's, it's often... Uh, Often happens in soccer where you score a goal in the very first few minutes or seconds of the game, and then uh, after that, sometimes the team can go a little bit flat. I, I think the Huskies uh, relaxed a little bit, uh, thought they were going to probably get seven or eight goals today. OSU's had a couple of opportunities now, so uh, the game is actually flowing right now. Uh, and well, here's a chance here as Samoza can control. Nice job there by Hill to come off his line and cut down the angle after a great through ball from Foise. Terrific through ball. Good forward run from Ben Samoza who does that very well. A good shot under pressure. Well saved by Brian Hill in a good position. Now Tedder who couldn't control there the last time when it came to him in the box. He'll battle with Grazier and the Huskies able to get possession. Foise flicking on. Tried to do a little bit too much that time, and Weisenflu was able to intercept. Weisenflu is a, is a talented player. He's, uh, he pushes forward a little bit from the back and plays really good diagonal balls uh, from right to left or left to right, and uh, he's a very poised player. Tedder and McCarty unable to link up that time for the Beavers at the top of the box, and Somoza with some space now getting closed down a little bit by Roth. Foise. Huskies have really been dangerous down both flanks here in the first half. Now it's a case of having maybe too many forward if they don't stretch it out well. Sleeth coming out of the back. Nice move around Groom. He creates an opening top of the box for Somoza. Passes up on the shot. Carries as far as Hart. His volley goes wide. A little bit of unselfishness there by Ben Somoza. He appeared to have a pretty open shot, Alan. 
Well, Ben Simone's might have been a bit more uh, decisive there. Uh, shot was probably the player, but he crossed the ball. Ball gets headed out to uh, Wes Hart, who hits a tremendous uh, left foot volley, uh, and he just misses the post here. But Simone chose to cross the ball, headed out by uh, Oregon. Good left foot shot by Wes Hart. If it's in the if it's in the corner, it's a goal. Good first touch control, hit the ball in the left foot volley, aim for the far post, just missed the post. Oregon State dodging a bullet perhaps there, especially as hot as Hart has been recently. You don't want to give him another chance. And the Husky captain just pulling it wide this year. You see three of his game winners amongst his five goals, including the goal against Stanford, which really kind of propelled the Huskies onto the division title. Giveaway here and a chance in the box. Shot off Dickinson and in. Justin Kirk gets handed a gift and picks up his fourth goal of the season. Just like that, Oregon State is level. And like a communication between the two freshman central defenders for, for the Huskies and Justin Kirk uh, in the right place at the right time to get the uh, rebound and uh, hit the ball in the back of the net. Uh, even though Dickinson got a touch, he really had no chance. That ball shouldn't have been played through through the Oregon player. It should have been played wide. Tedder able to come up with the deflection. And Kirk walked into the box and picked up the goal. Tedder with his first assist of the year. And Kirk, who entered the game today, among the top 25 scorers in the league, will add to that total with his fourth goal. Sleeth under some pressure. And a throw in for Washington. Sleeth will take this one in the attacking half. You get a look again at the freshman from Lakewood, Colorado. Justin Kirk getting the Beavers level here. In the 27th minute of play with his goal. Sleeth. Under some good pressure there by Howes. Now a whistle and a free kick to Washington. Oregon State Beavers, even though they had a bad start to this game, have always continued to try very hard and they're well organized and uh, got a bit of a break there. And the game is now tied for one. Somoza's free kick, volleyed on by Foise, but to the keeper. Always tough to get a lot on that when you're at an angle with that header. From it's the particularly hard to try and score with a header from 18 yards out. And uh, Michael Caselli got his, his head on the end of that uh, free kick from uh, Benjamin Somoza, but it, it, it was straight to, to Brian Hill. Somoza winning this one again. Takes off down the line. A good touch for him from Foise. Roth in pursuit. Somoza trying to hold him off. Crossing ball. No one home. Covered at the back post by Ryan Foster. But it goes all the way through. They say no touch at all and a throw into Oregon State. Very, very good combination play between uh, Greg Foise and Benjamin Somoza. Uh, Benjamin Somoza strolled down the outside. Great speed. Good look up there. Played the ball nicely and firmly along the six-yard line. There's a goal for somebody who wants to get in there. And in terms of the creative opportunities and the chances, Alan, the Huskies have had plenty of them. They just have not had finishers in the right spot lately. McCoy conceding a throw in here. That, that's one of the negatives, actually, of playing only one up the, uh, up, up the front. Uh, Reese Bettinger just playing up the front on his own. Of course, uh, UW playing two wide men. So the wide man has to make a, a hell of a long run to go from left uh, to center sometimes to get on the end of crosses like that. But it was good play. And if you keep doing that kind of thing, you will get goals. Well, Washington has made a substitution. And we didn't see him come onto the field. It's uh, Holtovich coming onto the field for Washington. Bettinger on the bench. And we apologize for that. We didn't hear the substitute step onto the field at all. Uh, Zlatan uh, Holovich uh, scored a goal and got an assist in, in his last game uh, for the UW. And uh, we'll be looking to add to that today. Polilovic, a freshman from Bosnia. Has seen limited playing time this year. There is a 
look at him goal and an assist in his opening season you can see a good size on that young man as well as the Dean Wurzberger hoping to get some guys a little bit of playing time today but as he said they've not had a, a comfortable season at all have the Huskies in terms of being able to get some guys some playing time because they've always been in close ball games. Hart stepping into the box drew a little contact there play on the call. Weisenflu marking him there now left wide open is Foise as the Huskies counter again. Hart tried to send it over. Sent out of harm's way by Maroney. Sagar with a quick throw as the Huskies restart. McCoy. And a throw in to Washington. No, they do have the restart now. It will be a free kick as Hart was brought down. And, uh, these free kicks are uh, to the side, uh, are very dangerous free kicks. And lots of big, strong players for the Huskies will attack this, but this uh, free kick that's coming in from uh, Morgan McCoy. Loose, volleyed clear, and a goal kick. Oregon State and Washington are even at one in the first half. We'll have more action after this pause on Fox Sports Net. We welcome you back to Seattle, Oregon State, bringing in a pair of substitutes. Matt Olson coming in, along with Alex Close, as Groom and Tedder come out of the lineup for the Beavers. Leith sending this one clear. Good header on the run by Olsen as he's able to backtrack, conceding the throw in to Washington. Sleeth for Samoza. As you get a look at Matt Olsen, the junior from Helena, Montana. Foise volleying by him. Samoza. Lot, lots of good little control for the Husky attackers today, Alan. Samoza taken off the ball nicely. A good play again by Olsen, and he clears. Tallman trying to volley it back in. Nice flick there by Casali, and it finds Samoza with some space. Chance there where he could have settled and perhaps gone in to attack a little bit more. Whistle off the ball. It's going to be a free kick to Washington as you uh, see Matt Olsen appealing the call. I didn't see anything that really uh, merited the whistle there. It was clearly an off, off the ball uh, situation that the referee was very firm about and uh, has given uh, Washington. Well, the young man lost his balance more than anything else, but Washington gets a free kick. As a result, Samoza set to take it. Driven low and again cleared by the OSU defense. Weisenflu there to cover it that time for the Beavers. Now Grazier conceding the ball again for the Beavers. Cleared up at the back that time by Tolman. Roth. And again, a miss communication as Grazier heads it off of his teammates leg Tallman and it's a corner kick for Oregon State uh, and that's two times now that uh, the freshman central defenders uh, for 
University of Washington have got themselves in, in trouble, mainly because of communication, because uh, being freshmen, they're not the most experienced players uh, uh, possible because of, they're just freshmen. Corner kick going back over the bar. That one taken by Nick Jensen, who's also checked into the lineup for Oregon State. The sophomore from Crescent Valley High School in Corvallis, appearing in his eighth game of the year. Olson's done a real solid job at the left back thus far. He gives up the ball this time. Foise, Roth trying to backtrack with him. Two defenders chasing him now. Steps through two, trying to beat a third, and had to play it just a bit strong. It's cleaned up at the back by Maroney. But it'll be a corner kick for Washington. Olson did fantastic there. Uh, he ran back, and he ran back, and he ran back. And in the end, if he hadn't run back, I think uh, Foise would have been all the way in, probably with an open net. Wes Hart set to take this corner. Headed back yet again and covered very nicely for Oregon State by Foster. Goal kick. foise has been busy in the first half with runs down the flank. And Dana Taylor has to be pleased with the way his team has played since conceding that first minute goal, Alan. Well, his fortunes have definitely changed around a lot. Uh, he is positive. I talked with him before the game. He, uh, he's got a good plan for uh, Oregon State Beavers. And obviously, this first year is a rebuilding year. That's why he's got so many freshmen in there. And uh, he's optimistic about uh, doing a very good job here uh, as he builds this program. But he's got to be in a good, uh, happy frame of mind right now. Uh, Just earlier on this year, in the spring uh, uh, soccer season, uh, Oregon State actually came here and tied 2-2 against the Huskies in a, in a very close ball forward game. Just a matter of time before he gets the guys he wants in the right place and gets his Beaver program going after the work Jimmy Conway did, getting it started from scratch and putting 11 years into the OSU program. And he, did a, he did a very good job, Jimmy. He built the program and uh, worked very hard and... Uh, did a great outstanding job. Justin Kirk taken off the ball nicely by Sleeth. Sleeth being given plenty of room in which to run. Now finds Sagar on the far side. Uh, Billy Sleeth has got a back problem, and uh, for me, he's actually uh, seems to be in some pain. Uh, he's not running as free and easy as he normally runs. Uh, Hopefully that back will get better soon. If it's, you know, it's, it seems to be uh, in a little bit of pain. Samoza slipping a bit as he started his run. Again, drawing a crowd of orange-shirted defenders with him, and earns the corner kick. That's what Samoza does best. He uh, he sees those little uh, seams open down inside left, inside right, and then he's gone. Tremendous speed, tremendous strength, tremendous poise. Samoza with the corner. Volleyed clear again by Weisenflu and a throw in to Washington. Uh, and this is the equivalent to a corner kick anyway because uh, Benjamin Samoza throws the ball a million miles. Weisenflu there once again. Samoza will just let it carry out. He was trying to find McCoy for the flick on that time at the near post. Now they'll change things around. Halilovic will come to the near post and attempts the same. Chested down as far as McCoy. Good poise there as he held, just played it a bit strong. Beavers were looking for the offside, but it's a goal kick to Oregon State. He's been a rock in the back for Washington. Morgan McCoy closing out his regular season. The Huskies will have another game here in Seattle. It'll be Wednesday against either UCLA or Cal State Fullerton. If you're in the Seattle area, Wednesday at 1 o'clock, they'll kick off for the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation Championship as the, Beaver, the uh, Huskies rather look to defend the crown they won a year ago. And as uh, you see there, if Washington wins the championship, they would host the Mid-Continent League champion if Washington wins the title. The winner of that game on Sunday the 14th would receive an automatic berth into the NCAA tournament field. And uh, the Huskies should get an at-large berth regardless of what happens to them, but you always like to be in charge of your own destiny. 
the really sad part about it all, Alan, is that by expanding the MPSF this year to 16 teams, quality teams, as we watch the foul for a moment, such as Washington and UCLA, have taken themselves out of an automatic berth into the NCAA that the conference used to get. Well, it's, it's also giving them more games. And sometimes more games means more injuries possibly or more cards. And it's That's a very good point. The cards are going to accumulate. And what happens with the soccer, much like men's and women's basketballs, they use a power ranking, the RPI. As a result, some of the new teams into the conference had weak enough schedules that they lowered the overall power rating of the MPSF to 12th in the country. Problem is, there's 11 automatic bursts in the tournament, so they've got to have a play-in game. Beavers on the attack, Kirk, from a tough angle, and Dickinson able to cover. So what they need to do is get the other teams in the league to have tougher schedules, and those teams have also improved their play this season, which will be taken into, event, uh, into effect when they reevaluate the RPI for next year. So hopefully, in the long run, the league's automatic berth will be back as it deserves to be with two teams in the last two years going to the Final Four, including winning the championship two years ago, and three ranked teams amongst its members. This conference should have an automatic berth without question. And to simplify all that, the Huskies have made the uh, postseason uh, tournaments the past five years and certainly will make it again this year. And uh, it just proves what a good program uh, the Huskies have got going here. And I'm sure they'll go from strength to strength and maybe one of these years become a national champion. Sleeth carded for his challenge on Wisenflu, our first yellow card of the game. Mr. Kashani making the notation in his book. Just inside of four minutes remaining here in the first half. As you get a look at the sophomore from Spokane's Ferris High School. Alan mentioned not up to speed, not 100%. Greg House, for a big guy, has got a really good touch on the ball. He's, he's got quick feet, uh, goes by people fairly easily, and uh, is also a goal scorer and a goal maker. Howell's getting a touch here as he tries to thread through, finding the overlapping run of Olsen, and it's smothered off the boot by Dickinson. But, Alan, I'll tell you, Dean Wurzberger has to be a little bit concerned with the number of opportunities the Beavers are getting head-on against his keeper. Well, I, I think they're playing a little bit under their normal uh, great sort of energy today. The Huskies, they're, they're, they're a little bit sloppy, uh, a little bit disorganized at the back. Uh, uh, and that's the first time I've seen that in a long time from the Huskies. Fourth save officially for Dickinson as you see his effort against Matt Olson. And the Breavers bring another substitute on as we have a whistle out at midfield for a challenge. Aaron Dickens has come in, a freshman from McQueen High School in Reno, West Hart picking himself slowly off the deck after being knocked down again. And there is a look at Dickens, the State of Nevada's Offensive Player of the Year. And a true scholar athlete, a major in nuclear engineering in Corvallis as that free goes a little bit strong and a goal kick coming up to Oregon State. Number five, uh, Matt Olson, who uh, incidentally has uh, he's, he's got one arm here, I think, uh, in terms of uh, it's quite unusual, very, very unusual to see a player with, with what appears to be a handicap. It's certainly not a handicap to Matt. I mean, Matt's uh, he's up the field, he's down the field, he tackles, he's fast, tremendous athlete, and it's a great credit to him that he's such a good soccer player with, uh, with, with, with sort of such a handicap. Made a great run on that last attempt. Whistle here and a free kick to Oregon State now as close as trundled down just outside the box by Tolman. And if the Huskies aren't careful here, the Beavers may just steal the lead away going into halftime. These free, free kick situations are very, very dangerous. And Ryan Smith, who's on the ball now, who's just been made a co-captain as a freshman, is a very impressive player. Good time on the ball, good poise. And he's looking to do something real good, real good here from a very dangerous position. Smith just getting numbers. Now the Beavers, actually what they're doing is running a little bit of time and bringing practically everybody into the box as a result. Smith off the wall. The Huskies had all 11 players back in the box as well. And a throw in now for Oregon State. With about a minute to go, they might as well 
go ahead and get some numbers and challenge. Nothing to lose right now for OSU. Close, covered, and a throw in to the Beavers. Deep once again. Casale covered that one. Again, a quick throw. Smith on the far side. Good cover there by Hart. The chance for Washington to perhaps counter in the closing seconds of the first half. Zalilovich, a little bit strong that time. No one in white anywhere near, near it. And Brian Hill able to get it under control. He's just going to send it to his back line as the Beavers content to run a little bit of clock here for a moment. What, what you've got at halftime is Dana Taylor will be very, very pleased and happy with the performance of uh, Oregon State Beavers. Dean Wurzberger uh, will probably have to have a good talking to to his uh, no, no. University of Washington no, no. Huskies here. They haven't played great in the first half of the Huskies, but it's, it's, it's a one-one time. Foise with time running out, having to take an off-balance shot, and that will close our first half of play. Casale, the deflected goal in the first minute as Dean Wurzberger makes some notes. Kirk countered for Oregon State on the giveaway for Dana Taylor's crew. We're even at the break, 1-1. One, one. We'll have more NCAA men's soccer after this on Fox Sports Net. Halftime in Seattle, Oregon State and Washington even with a goal apiece as the Beavers try to post the upset and get their first ever victory over the Washington Huskies. Todd Pickett along with Alan Hinton at halftime. Alan Dean Wurzberger's put some subs in, but I think he's uh, doing a little bit of talking to his team right now at the intermission. Oh, I'm sure he is. Uh, Huskies had a great start, but Dean's not happy now because after a great start, they got rather sloppy and aren't playing well right now, so Dean will be sorting them out. That's why he went to his bench fairly early in the game. Meanwhile, for Oregon State, their young players doing a good job. Their head coach, Dana Taylor, made the decision earlier in the year to play freshman. He talked about the pluses and minuses. There's a lot of things that come into play when you're talking about freshmen. First of all, you know, technically they may be right there with any other player, but uh, gamesmanship, uh, strength on the ball, uh, just just the little things that go on at Division One. I. I mean, we have a lot of guys that have played a lot of minutes, and that's good for us in the future. But uh, they're still not at the level um, that, you know, I'll say a junior or a senior is after playing in the league for two, three years. And as we said, really, uh, his team doing a pretty good job of staying even with Washington. They didn't hang their heads after giving up the early goal. And, and particularly his hold of the midfield. His four midfield players are all freshmen. Uh, Ryan Smith, who's, his, who's made co-captain, is a very fine player. And Dana Taylor's building his future uh, around freshmen and uh, sophomores and uh, hoping next year will be a much better year for him. I'm sure he will. A good opening 45 minutes today for Oregon State. They're even with Washington at the break. We'll have more from Seattle after this timeout on Fox Sports Net. Back in Seattle, just about ready to start the second half, tied in 1-1 between Oregon State and Washington. We take a look at some of the notes and highlights from our first half of play. Washington scoring in the opening minute. Kirk countering for Oregon State. Dickinson had to make four saves in the first half. And Billy Sleeth picking up the only yellow of the game so far. We see the first goal of the game coming from Casale off the free in the opening minute. Uh, Michael Casale who hits the ball like a rocket. Uh, ball hits the number seven on the head. Brian Hill could have got the ball, chose to leave it. Unfortunately for him, he went in the back of that to give uh, Washington an early lead. Washington threatened a lot in the opening moments of the half. Great run from uh, Jake Sagar on a good pass from Reese, uh, Reese Bettinger. Great shot, hit the crossbar, and underneath the crossbar came out. Oregon State countered, though, as Kirk was handed a ball for a goal. 
two central defenders got themselves in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, ball finishes up with Justin Kurt, uh, who scored uh, quite easily at the far post. Picked up his fourth goal of the year, but Dickinson was pressured even further beyond that and had to make a couple other nice saves. As we get our second half underway, tied at one, and the Huskies making a couple of substitutions. Chris Hollingshead on the field along with Mark Hoganhout as we start the second half. Kai Carroll has also come on for the Huskies as Hart battles against a pair of defenders. Olsen conceding the throw in as he tried to turn it back and ran out of space. Uh, Chad Olsen's uh, in goal this second half for, uh, for the Huskies, uh, uh, replacing James Dickinson. Samoza ready for the long throw. Headed clear, a nice job there by Olsen. Matt Olsen of getting up in the air. Some contact in the box. The volley back in wide as Hoganhout sent it through. No one could get to it on the back post. And that's what Mark Hoganhout does very well. He's got a very powerful, uh, cultured, educated left foot. And uh, that's what he does best, hit shots, uh, cross shots uh, like that. Hollingshead. Waiting for someone to track back to him just a little bit. Finds McCoy. Now Hogan Hout making the run to the outside. Trying to go long. Look at the keeper. Brian Hill was clear outside the box when that one was played, Allen. He chases it and lets it go for the goal kick. But he's playing way off his line now. Well, that's what good goalkeepers should do. And uh, he did the right thing. And, of course, he was able to let it run for a goal kick. Huskies have changed the tactics a little bit here, apart from making some substitutions. They're playing two strikers now, Kai Carroll and... Uh, Jake Sager down the middle, uh, four in the midfield and uh, four defensively. Hogan Hout taking that ball off of Ryan Foster, but couldn't keep control. A little bit of a mistake by the freshman defender for OSU. We look at the numbers and fairly evenly balanced all the way through. Well, it's a big surprise that uh, OSU is out shooting the Huskies eight to six at this point in time. Uh, Hart with a through ball, Sagar some contact, no whistle. You hear the reaction of the fans. Wes Hart was very impatient to get this second half underway, so I, I think Dean Wurzberger's uh, done a fairly good job of motivating his players coming out a little bit fired up to start this second half. Uh, and in fact, some referees would have given a penalty kick there. Uh, there was contact. Uh, the referee chose not to do anything about it. Casali coming out of the back. Sleeth on the far side, so he's remaining in. A good turn right here. Sagar's crossing ball headed clear. Good work again by the central defense for Oregon State. Samoza, good control. Outside ball now for McCoy. Back post, Hart just got underneath it a little bit. Very, very good play there. Uh, uh, Benjamin, Sam Benjamin Samoza does what he does best. He comes uh, through the midfield, finds those seams, uh, went forward inside left, uh, played Morgan McCoy clear down the outside left position. Good cross to the back post, just a little bit too high for Wes Hart, who was coming in nicely. Allen moments ago, Hart and Sagar teaming up. I didn't see a lot there. Well, I, I, I'll just go back to my uh, earlier comment that I, I think some referees would have given it, and uh, I'm sure the University of Washington coaches will uh, think that was a penalty kick, uh, but that a bit biased anyway, and so they should be. Deflected away by Howes, a throw in for Washington. losing control as the Beavers have to backtrack a little bit. Now Howes. Good back heel here to release McCarty down the left side. He teams up, has Howes there. Now Olsen. Strong tackle there by Somoza. Stays in play. Now a whistle as we finally stop and it will be a free kick to the Beavers. Goal kick to Washington as McCarty couldn't keep it under control. Billy 
Charlie Sleeth back to help mark him. There a look again at the freshman, two-time all-provincial selection at Prince of Wales High School in Vancouver, BC. The long punt from Chad Olson, who's, as we mentioned earlier, in the lineup now as the Husky keeper. Freshman from Issaquah, who's the starter for much of the early season. Hogenhout's crossing ball cut out, but he'll track it down again and find McCoy. Trying to get Hogenhout through on the run. He has a step on the defender, cutting back. Carroll couldn't control, and it'll be a goal kick to Oregon State. Everyone's favorite ball shagger is back again behind the fence. That was an incredible pass there from Morgan McCoy uh, into the... Uh, there's the fastest defender on the field. <laughs> I think the, the dog is a regular fan of soccer here at Husky Stadium. He, uh, that dog is always here. He's, he's currently serving his red shirt season. He wants to be a Husky. He just hasn't figured out a way to make the change. <laughs> Carroll, nice job defensively there by Maroney. Now Howes sending on for Tedder. Howes, a tough kick there. McCarty trying to give chase. Sleeth gets to it first. Now Hollings head, Hogenhout. Long ball, the Huskies had hesitated momentarily, and again, the keeper, Hill, playing almost as a, a fifth back there. He was playing like a sweeper. He was three or four yards outside of his penalty box before the ball was even played by uh, Mark Hogan out there and uh, was in the right position at the right time. Ben Roth being given acres of space to make a run. He elected to try to lay it off and the Huskies were able to intercept. Roth had the space and almost seemed hesitant not knowing what to do right then. Sagar trying to make this one stick to the feet. Big push there and he gets away with it again. He really extended the ball out front. Finds Somoza. Huskies with two on the edge of the box. Somoza trying to get around Olsen, threads through, and a goal, Carroll on the touch after a brilliant run by Somoza. Kai Carroll tallies for Washington his seventh of the year. Outstanding run forward here by Benjamin Somoza, went around the corner very well, took it to the dead ball line. Crossed it over, Kai Carroll in the perfect position to score an easy tapping goal. Actually went through the legs of Matt Olsen, but a great cross, and Kai Carroll in the right position. Nothing like Megan, the defender, on the cross. Uh, Olsen did about all he could do. Somoza with the great run, tallying the assist. His seventh assist of the year, which will move him up the conference assist marks, and he's trying to get another one here as he releases Hart. Wisen flew with him, Hart cutting back, leaves for Somoza, didn't quite complete his run in time, and Ryan Smith was able to get to it first. Now Somoza again flicking outside for Sleeth. He'll round the defense. Wisen flew popping it up, keeper have to volley that one away. Kogan out top of the box, didn't get enough on it. Second chance, that one covered by Olsen. McCoy. For Hogan Howe. Back post, a strong drive header there, and just on the side netting. Carroll nearly got back to back tallies. That was a great cross from Mark Hogan out under bit of pressure. Uh, far post, Clay Carroll probably would have scored if he'd have had it back to the far post. In fact, he went for near post and just hit the side netting. Alan, that was a tremendous little half volley drive. It was quality at its very best. Mark Hogan out, uh, who I actually coached for a couple of years, has got a beautiful left foot. And uh, he had a left foot when he was 11, 12 years of age, and he's got a great left foot now, and he's playing very well. Uh, and it's good to see him playing so well in the start of the second half. Carroll nearly got two in a hurry there. He was tied for seventh in the conference in goal scoring coming in, so he'll move up after registering his seventh goal of the season. What's probably happened here, as we said, uh, the coaching staff at the University of Washington probably had a good talk to their team, probably said, do you want to play on Wednesday against UCLA? And uh, they all want to do that, so they've stepped up their game dramatically, and uh, it's really entertaining soccer right now. And the Allen, credit to Dean Wurzberger and the depth that he has, because two of the young men he brought off the bench to start the half have really provided the spark here in Hogan, Hout, and Carroll. 
Well, the sign of a good team is how, how, how deep is your your squad, and I think uh, they've got a good deep squad here at the University of Washington. But they've also they're tactically very very smart. Uh, you know, with Jimmy Gabriel, uh, and Dean Wurzberg, and Matt Gonzalez, it's very very smart coaching team, and, and tactically they've been great today. Keeper way out, the net is empty for Sagar. Covered at the back post by Olsen, a big help there. Hogan out the wise through ball, and Olsen makes the defensive play of the day. That's Matt Olsen for Oregon State. Well, the two wide midfield players for uh, for the Huskies, Hogan out, and uh, Benjamin Samoza, are doing outstanding work, uh, getting wide, making opportunities. Jake Sager with his great speed went clear of the goalkeeper there. Very unconventional style goalkeeper, Brian Hill. He's always off his line, got caught there. Great cover by Matt Olsen to stop a certain goal for the Huskies. Ten minutes gone in this second half. Samoza set to take the corner. Near post volleyed away there. Howes coming back again. Hogan Hout to Samoza. Howes challenging him. He gets around him. Left loose. Wide open chance here. And again a little unselfish play perhaps by Tallman. He'll take a second crack at it and it's covered by Hill. Uh, Brian Hill is being hit from every angle, crosses, shots, uh, one on ones against him, and uh, Huskies are playing superb soccer in the, at the beginning of the second half. First 10 minutes, absolutely magic soccer. Hogan Howdy intercepting and keeping the ball in play. Thought Tallman might have been a little unselfish first time there. He could have again cracked a shot, and he looked to try to lay it off to Wes Hart. Hogan Howdy another interception. I think he's making a claim for a few more minutes here in a hurry. Nobody getting to his cross, however. Smith stepped in and intercepted that one for Oregon State. The Beavers will try to counter now a little bit. Howes looking to go long for Nick Jensen. He challenges McCoy and he'll get whistled for that challenge from behind. And McCoy's having a few words in uh, uh, number 11's ear there as he runs out. And the official tells him, that's my job. You let me take <laughs> care of that. And I gave you the foul as it is. No, no nonsense. Morgan's going to tell the referee, I'm not talking to you, Mr. Referee. I'm talking to number 11. He's still going to chat with both of them. He's still talking to each player. And Nick Jensen saying, I don't want him talking to me like that referee. <laughs> That's funny. They're not giving it up either. Tallman with the free kick. They'll wait till the referee's following the ball and have a few more words now. Sleeth's on the run. Taken off the ball by McCarty. Roth. Very quiet game so far for Tedder, who had that little touch. He comes back to the ball once again. Ridden strongly off the ball that time by Hollingshead. Good Hart. interception by Hollingshead. Trying to find Sagar. Olsen battling him again. He's a good athlete, Olsen. Loves this game. Always running, always running hard. Uh, loves it. Samoza being challenged. Holds off Ben Roth. Now a whistle as Roth brought him down while he was on the deck. A little accidental contact and some sportsmanship there by Roth as he'll trot back into position. Samoza, very talented player, very influential uh, in the mood swings of the Huskies. He's, he's, he does everything when he's really ro rolling and rocking like he is right now. Free kick carrying a bit far, and it'll be fielded by Hill. There again, you see some of the long ball ability of Hill. And just a little touch volley. <laughs> Tedder trying to claim his shirt was being tugged on that last challenge from Hollingshead. Turned toward the referee and made that motion. Defender slips here, but... Again, back at the back, Tallman there to clean up. He'll just concede the throw in. And what happened here tactically is the Huskies started off by playing two wide players and one striker. Now they've gone to two strikers, and it's working very well for them. Oregon State with a pair of substitutes coming in. We'll tell you about them when we return.
Welcome back to Seattle Oregon State and Washington in the second half the Beavers have brought Justin Kirk back into the lineup. And they've also brought in Jack Wheeler from Eugene originally from Scotland from Peterhead Academy in Scotland where he played his secondary ball. That's Wheeler on the ball now for OSU. They trail Washington by a 2-1 score. Casali and Carroll for the Huskies. Kirk for Oregon State. Good defensive clearance there by uh, Chris Hollingsworth. Showed a bit of speed. Read the situation very well. Wheeler set to take the throw. Kirk, a nice through ball right there, trying to release Smith and the Beavers with some numbers for the first time this half. Olsen, good through ball, nearly found the feet of Tedder, and it's covered nicely by Chad Olsen for Washington. Chad Olsen, who uh, started the first 10 games of this season, lost his place. They started position uh, for three games to James Dickinson, uh, and is now sharing uh, 45 minutes uh, each uh, in today's game with James Dickinson. Uh, Chad Olsen's a good goalie. He's had a good year. Sagar with a nice turn just sends it wide. He nearly had the keeper beat. Eleni does a nice job to Sagar just bringing it in control and setting up his own turn. Well, Sagar, for me, is doing better uh, as a joint striker with uh, Kai Carroll today. He, he comes in and out of the game as a, when he's playing wide as a winger, and, and he's having a very good spell right now. And a very good shot on the turn, and uh, that's the kind of thing I noticed they were doing a lot of in there at the warm-up drills with Jimmy Gabriel and uh, uh, Craig Weibel, actually, who's the volunteer coach for the University of Washington, and they do a lot of quick shooting drills in, in, in practice all week and, and uh, prior to the game today. Wheeler trying to spark an attack here for Oregon State. Hogan Hout right off the noggin of Ben Roth that time. Carroll, a nice little layoff to Somoza. Runners to the right. We'll send Sleeth out wide. Casali will hold his ground. Hart. Top of the box for Carroll. Couldn't quite get the turn he wanted on it. Now volleying back across and left it short of Sagar. Hart chasing this one down, trying to get his balance. And comes up a little bit there with Greg Howes. They get the quick restart. Sleeth towards the post. Volleyed to the top. No one there in white. And it's covered by Roth. Wheeler covered by McCoy concedes the throw in. Not a lot of options there. Jack Wheeler looks a good player to me, number six, who's just come in uh, as a substitute uh, outside wing right fullback, and he's got good composure on the ball, uh, plays it nicely and early. Looks a good player. That's pretty nice of an Englishman to say about a Scot. Oh, he's a Scotsman? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's still a good player. I know plenty of Scotsmen, and most of them are good players. Spent some time, uh, had a very successful youth club career in Scotland as well. Was one of the highlights, winning a club championship in Aberdeen. Throw in to Washington. Wheeler, nice trap right there to maintain control. Trying to find his real only option right now in Tedder. Olsen. He's got a good sprint, really gets up to speed quickly there, doesn't he? He likes to get forward as well. Nearly got through on the overlap right there. McCarty's ball a bit short. Weisenflug getting control. Had to work around the referee a little bit there. And the Husky is able to stop Oregon State momentarily. Now Tedder outside for Olsen. Sleeth with him there. And earns the corner kick. Oregon State Beavers, even though they've lost 11 games this season, have lost six of them by just one goal. So they, 
they've been in most games and uh, and then in this game too. Over the bar that time the Beavers are trying to claim that it was headed by Washington and that's exactly what our official says as well. It'll be another corner. The most difficult part of this game sometimes is when a goalkeeper has to get amongst the crowd of people that always seem to accumulate in the six yard box on corner kicks against. It's a nice job by Carroll of backtracking to mark that one. Howes. Nicely to the feet of Wisen flew back across and nearly got that one through. Good looking volley there and he showed some nice poise settling and then making the play. Uh, what made the play was a very good, well-driven corner kick from the right by Greg Howes, who is an impressive player. I've, uh, I'm enjoying watching him play today. He's got plenty of time on the ball. Very good corner kick there. Uh, Wisen flew good control on his own. Uh, Might have hit the target, but it was a good shot. Howes third on the all-time career assist list and ninth in career points in Oregon State history, and again doing that in just two years after transferring from Pierce Community College, originally from Tacoma. The Huskies will bring Greg Foise back in as there you get a look at Greg Howes, Franklin Pierce High School in Tacoma. Foise coming back into the game now, replacing Jake Sagar. And what you're seeing here again is a, a change of tactics again by the Huskies, and this is what they do a lot of, very successfully. Uh, they put in uh, three players up front again. I think West Hart is pushing forward more now. Uh, and Foise's got this tremendous speed, and it'll be interesting to see how he does playing right down the middle. Just about midway through the second half as Olsen makes another run for OSU. Nearly beat three defenders that time and a whistle and a foul called on the Beavers for the run. A little question there by Howes as he goes back. Alan, Dana Taylor eventually, if this line stays, will have to make the decision when to start pushing players up a little bit and look for an equalizer. Obviously, plenty of time for it still, but. I'm sure he's got to be thinking about when to make that move and how to reposition people. Well, right now, he's uh, he got bombarded first 20 minutes of, uh, of the second half, and they're just beginning to settle down a little bit now. And they're going to get bombarded again as Morgan McCoy's long run sails just wide. No one ever really not marked him up and made him stop his run. Well, he's a powerful runner, Morgan, and he did get behind the midfield there and went all the way. It's a very good shot uh, just wide of the post. Trying to find his first goal of the year, and and again, our back behind the fence sweeper couldn't quite get to it either. The most frustrated dog in all of America, Alex Close, back into the lineup for Oregon State now as he's replaced Tedder. And a whistle again, contact and a free kick for Washington. A lot of guys starting to pick themselves off the deck a few times. Samoa's the most recent. Hollingshead with the short restart, finding McCoy. Hogan Hout will let that one carry off Wheeler for the throw in. And another substitute coming in. Bettinger, I believe, getting ready to check back in. Yes, for Washington. So they'll give Reese another run up front. And he'll replace Kai Carroll, who right now stands to have the game winning goal with his tally in the 52nd minute. Good run there for Carroll. Well, kind of, uh, got an important go-ahead goal and almost got another one uh, uh, shortly after that. Uh, Reese is coming in. Nearly had it there. Hart with a chance. Keeper getting back to his line in a hurry. West tried to cut it through once again. And Reese almost got a, his first goal of the season uh, on his first touch uh, having re-entered the game. Contact McCarty able to fend that off trying to look now for Kirk the goal scorer for the Beavers and Chad Olson calling the defense off. Bettinger with a little bit of space numbers either way he'll leave it for Hogan Hout pulled that one a little wide but Hart giving chase will be able to keep it. Samoza dangerous spot again for him. Keeper covers that crossing attempt. Samoza very very strong player was clearly second best there but still got uh, to the ball and uh, 
Brian Hill made a good save at the near post. Samoa's are very strong. Sophomore getting the assist on the go-ahead goal. Matt Olson coming up once again, looking back post. Olson to Olson as Chad hauls it down. Chad coming into today's game, second in goals against average in the conference at 0.77. Poise and Wheeler battling. There's a good matchup. Sali, been relatively quiet here in the second half. Can't control there. And Oregon State will bring Sven Broon back the into the lineup. Never been checked out early in the Olson. first half. And Matt Olson really had a fine outing today, Alan. Uh, tremendously impressed with him. He's, he's carried an injury uh, most of the season, apparently, and uh, uh, clearly is coming out with a, with a foot problem that he's had uh, for most of the season. And uh, he won't enjoy being taken out, but clearly he's got a problem with his foot. It's great seeing a player with such great heart and soul and love for the game like Matt Olson. He's very, very impressive. What a great athlete. And if you remember, he stopped a certain goal uh, when Jake Seguer went clear. Uh, who was at the near post to stop that certain goal? Uh, Matt Olson, who'd run yep. 50, 60 yards to get back. Good defensive gem, and he was creative offensively as well. McCoy sprinting across midfield. A little compression of space right there. Bettinger will take the Hello. throw. Now he'll give it to Hogan Hout instead. McCoy. Good look off the ball that time to create a little bit more time for himself. Broom, that's a tough target to get around. He's, he's a big guy, isn't he? Howes. Not been able to do much in attack today as Howes. He's played well, though. Uh, Tony, uh, he makes things happen. Uh, very composed player. Bettinger and Hart just kind of out sprinting the defense and one of them has to get off the ball. It will finally be Bettinger will flank. Hogan Hout again trying to drive. Flicked on by Foise. The flag's up. Allen mentioned it. Washington really on a run. Started when they were on the road and that the game at Denver was an unusual one. Postponed originally by snow and then they had to go into overtime to win it. The Huskies have been in six overtime games so far this year. They've been on a roll ever since, Alan. And I think the pivotal big time uh, confidence booster for the University of Washington was when they beat Cal and uh, Stanford in two consecutive uh, tough games against ranked teams. That helped Washington to climb back into the rankings after dropping out for about five weeks or so and currently number 15 in the Soccer America poll. Their highest of the three polls used for college soccer. Jimmy Gabriel always tells me you want to be in the rankings at the end. Exactly. That's the, the motto for any coach, regardless of sport. Bettinger battling with Wheeler, and Bettinger will be whistled for the contact. And uh, you can see uh, he's having a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> Deliberation. I thought for a minute he was going to get a severe talking to, but he did earn a smile from the official on that one finally. Why not? It looked as though we were going to him and telling him he didn't want any uh, any debate after the whistle, but he finally did get a smile from Mohammed Zarabi Kashani. Little miscue there by Tallman under pressure from Kirk. Keeper slides out. Kind of similar to how Kirk was allowed to score in the first half, but the Huskies clean it up a little better this time. Howes close, leaving it for him. A nice run there. Casale, some good defensive work. Close once again. The Huskies able to get it away. Bettinger seemed to be a lot of contact that time in his back. He'll eventually track the ball down anyway. Wheeler. 
Wheeler's going to be carded for it. He did get ball first, but a little over enthusiastic with that challenge. Of course, he'd say, hey, at home, that's a legal challenge. Well, he was always late, and it had yellow card written all over it from when Jack Wheeler started to run. Reese had always got him. Yep. I'll stand corrected, too. From up here, it looked as though he got ball originally, but yellow card has been issued at it was not even close. Number six, Jack Wheeler of Oregon State. Husky free kick. And of course, they don't do that in Scotland, right? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> never seen a man get, get chopped that way at Parkhead or anywhere else. Hogan out looking to the box a bit strong. And again, Brian Hill reading that one all the way. It's going to be an interesting month of November there in the UK with that uh, England-Scotland playoff for a berth in the European Championships. I'd like to be at that game. It sounds, sounds as if it's going to be everything that's needed in soccer and a lot at stake two-legged playoff there and uh, the entire UK a buzz with that matchup I think lately they've been a buzz with more with who's not going to be healthy enough to play in it than who will be call-ups were pretty interesting this week that, that's when you need a stadium with about 300,000 people uh, able to go because they'd certainly sell the tickets Foise battling on the far side, lost his balance on the field. And you mentioned earlier, Alan, this pitch going into November, although it's still in good shape, is a little bit chewed up, a little nicked. Well, it's had a fair amount of playing uh, all, all year long. And I think there was an alumni game on this field before the game. And I think uh, uh, that probably uh, chewed the pitch up a little bit. It's not played as well today as it has in the past. Zach Kingsley, a sophomore from Shadle Park High School in Spokane, will come in. Somoza will take a breather. Will more than likely be done for the day, but you never know for sure. And Oregon State will also make another substitution. Nick Jensen will return to the lineup for the Beavers, and he will replace Aaron McCarty. And in on the reach start, Bettinger, you said you thought today would be the day when he'd get off the schneid, and he did. Well, he's got that big-time monkey off his back. And, he's uh, got a grin about six miles wide, too. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. I mean, Reese is one of the game's nice guys, and uh, very nice goal for him. One of the simplest opportunities he's probably had all year, and he gleefully accepts it with a big smile right across the Pacific Northwest. Reese Bettinger breaks it in the final game of the regular season. The goose egg is 28th career goal. Foise with the assist, and it's 3-1 in favor of Washington. And we're going to get another yellow card here for the late challenge by Hart. Yellow card has of the I'm afraid Mr. Kashani has gone back to no nonsense calls again. <laughs> well, this is what drives coaches crazy. I mean, West Hart, the game is 3-1 uh, in front for the Huskies. West Hart doesn't need to go into those kind of tackles and put himself under pressure. Very delicate, beautiful little header from Reese Bettinger. Alone, four or five yards from goal, just neatly headed it gently over the goalkeeper. And... Uh, his first goal of the season, would you believe it? Well, that's the type of thing that really could uh, fare well for Reese and for the Huskies, though, as they head into postseason competition because it's a guy who is dangerous anytime he gets on the ball. I think Reese has proved that. I mean, Reese, uh, all of his career, he's been a goal scorer all the way back to Bellevue Christian, uh, coached by Kevin Jones. Uh, he's, he's a momentum goal scorer. He gets goals all the time, but when you go into a major slump, you keep continuing. Foise to beating a pair of markers and just pulling that one wide, and uh, the gate's starting to open a little bit. Uh, Bettinger's now likely to go on a roll in terms of goal scoring, so the coaches will be very happy that uh, going into the playoffs, uh, the tournament play next week, uh, starting on Wednesday. Uh, Reese will be uh, looking to get more and more goals, and he probably will. Again, that will be either UCLA or Cal State Fullerton, two ranked teams. They are squaring off for the Pacific Division 
part of the Mountain Pacific Sports Federation Championship. One of those two teams will be here Wednesday, the 10th at one o'clock at the Husky soccer field. That should be a great game. Throw in here for Ben Roth as Dean Wurzberger now with a two goal cushion, something he'd hope to get sometime during the season, but hasn't had too often. Headed away by Casali and the Huskies will concede another throw in. Oregon State have battled very well in this game. Uh, no matter what happens in the last uh, 12 minutes of this game, Oregon State have performed uh, pretty well here. and. Uh, Weisenflu sending that one just wide of the bar. Washington leads Oregon State 3-1 in the second half. And we welcome you back to Seattle, Washington, with a pair of second-half goals to break open a one-all tie, and they lead Oregon State by a score of three to one. Bettinger making a run here onto the ball once again. Beavers trying to counter. That'll go in as they throw in. Washington making another substitution here in the second half. As senior Jay Gomez will come in and get some action after being honored on senior day. Guy who might have a, a little bit of inside knowledge that would help in the postseason. As you get a look at Jay, he originally started his college career at Cal State Fullerton. And a good decision by uh, Dean Wurzberger to take out Wes Hart, who's got a yellow card. Doesn't need to go into the tournament with uh, West Card. Any uh, difficulty of possibly missing uh, games in the tournament by uh, staying on and getting another yellow card or even uh, uh, a red card, which would clearly put him out of uh, the big games coming up. Bettinger. Trying to find Gomez as he nearly was able to step around Ryan Smith. Foise. Double challenge just about every time. Sleep crossing ball and Foise couldn't get a foot on that. Ryan Hill waiting for his teammates to disperse themselves down the field. And that one goes to the feet of Tedder, but he's unable to control. Now a chance again for Oregon State to build up. Jensen working down the far side. Kept it in the field of play and got, nope, now the flag has come up. Very, very late. Still no signal for it. Tapped in. And finally, that's going to be disallowed. Very, very late whistle. Good work by the crew, though, is Ben Ross shot will not count and they ruled that he'd gone over the end line we take a look I'll tell you what quite debatable uh, but Jensen did a good job continuing to play you play until the referee blows his whistle uh, that was pretty close uh, but the linesman's in the best position to see that play yeah keep in mind that uh, our camera there is a little bit back off the field, so not a total angle on top of the line. McCoy, not like we're trying to defend the officials or anything. Flick on for Bettinger again, covered up by Hill. Foise again, unselfish, could have turned and perhaps cracked another one. Well, Bettinger's running easier now. He feels a lot better about himself, I'm sure. And uh, he'll be looking to add to his uh, the goal he just scored. Huskies getting set for that Wednesday matchup against either UCLA or Cal State Fullerton. Dean Wurzberger had these thoughts. It's, it's safe to say if we win that game on, on Wednesday, we're pretty much definitely in the tournament with an at-large bid. If you lose the game on Wednesday, obviously you, you come out second in the conference championship, but, you know, it's, it's just I think our chances still might be good. 
but obviously I think if we win the game you know you pretty much definitely put yourself in postseason in regards to uh, at large selection and you get the play in game the following Sunday and uh, it's back to back rings I mean to, to win it last year the way we did on the road and to have a, ch a second chance to do it back to back at home is very motivating and I think the guys are excited about having a shot at a second ring. It's a nice carrot to dangle in front of your players sometimes and uh, they'll certainly hope to get that on their home field also hoping to go a little bit further in the NCAA tournament this year Bettinger with a chance wide open wow. Boise left alone cuts it back again for Bettinger Oh, the Huskies are in gear Bettinger with his second and some unselfish one twos with Boise. Well you we could see that come in. Uh, Momentum goal scorers always seem to score when they're scoring and they don't score when they're not scoring and Bettinger jumped higher then than he did the first time I think to celebrate and a great uh, play from Foise. Uh, it started off actually with uh, Bettinger not making the defender to send Foise clear. Uh, Foise squared it back into Bettinger who very coolly put it in the back of the net with his uh, good left foot. Fine linking up all the way along between the two and Reese Bettinger. Two goals in the second half, 29th now of his career, giving him 72 career points. I'm sure if, uh, if there's one thing Dean, Berg, Dean Wersberger would have wanted out of this game today, apart from uh, uh, keeping away from injured players, was his hope would have been that Reese could get uh, on the scoring chart. And of course, now uh, Reese has got two goals, his first two of the season and uh, expectations of wonderful performances from Reese uh, in terms of goal scoring uh, in, in, in the tournament. Let's that one run into open net here. If Sagar will just chip it, he waited a little bit long and he paid the price. Brian Hill able to get back in time and a first time little chip right there would have made it five. Uh, Oregon State have gone a bit uh, uh, Uncontrollable right now. They're, they're just pushing forward uh, uh, and disciplined a little bit. I've been disciplined for uh, most of this game today uh, and leaving many opportunities for the Huskies to go clear down the middle. Sagar again with space has just Gomez the box. Now the number is building. A little bit strong for Gomez that time. Hogan Hout with some pressure on Wheeler. And his ball will go into touch. A quick throw in here for Washington. Equaling a season high as you see with four goals for the Huskies and they'll go ahead and make another substitution Sleeth will now come off and Scott Grazier will return to the lineup. So Sleeth able to go into the 86th minute before coming out of the game. And Dean's feeling very good about himself now. I mean completed another very successful regular season uh, seven. Uh, this will be their seventh straight victory. What a way to go into the tournament and they'll cap an undefeated season in the Mountain Division going 7 and 0 there and that's another strong performance for Washington as we mentioned their second Mountain Division title uh, with a team that can only get better and better and better and of course today they played without Bryn Ritchie at the back he'll be back for the tournament and uh, Dean will have a full squad of players to select his, uh, his team from Tallman trying to just volley that one into the attack Bettinger a good trap can he beat the last man strong challenge there from Nathan Maroney shoulder to shoulder prevented Reese from getting the hat trick perhaps good strong defending there by uh, Maroney uh, showed good speed uh, to combat the speed and strength of uh, Bettinger he was looking for his uh, his third and uh, goal a hat trick Wheeler I think Dean saying Reese save them up now. That was a nice little one two. Wheeler tried to find someone in the box and was unsuccessful. Sagar still going strong. Goal scorers get a little bit hungry when the gates start to open. Casale flicking on for Bettinger. A pair of runners for him again. Hogan out near post. Sagar at the back post. Taking on Groom. Boy that's a long sprint. He still managed to keep the possession. Backside and a little confusion there as Gomez was approaching and let the ball go through. Chance here in the box for the Beavers. Under control, just could not get the cap on it. And I believe that was, no, it wasn't Wheeler. It was Smith who couldn't get to it. Washington will come right back the other way. That was a good opportunity for Ryan Smith there. His first touch let him down there. I think he was already thinking he was going to score, and uh, his first touch was, was quite poor. Uh, and he's a good first touch player normally, but that was a great opportunity for him. Bettinger 
with the left covered by Brian Hill. Bettinger's confidence is absolutely sky high. Uh, just moments ago, he went down the right on a wonderful play, and just then he tried to chip the goalkeeper, who's actually very chippable, Brian uh, Hill. He's always off his line, and it just tells you what a smart player Reese Bettinger is because Brian Hill is always available to, be, uh, to have the ball chipped over his head. So they just need to give him flowers to present to his folks more often, and he'll come out with a two-goal performance. And, and that was a beautiful ceremony, and uh, all the seniors enjoyed it with their families. Uh, nobody enjoyed it better than Reese Bettinger. Yep, he was uh, Groom stepping up into the attack. He was uh, very emotional during it, uh, hugging his teammates, and a save there for Chad Olson. So he'll get another test here in the closing minutes. Uh, he was so emotional. I was wondering how they're going to play after the emotional uh, pregame ceremonies. Groom, no one there now for Casali. He'll flick on. Kingsley getting a touch. Good turn there as he rides off a couple defenders. Couldn't quite get it threaded through that time for Gomez. Well, after an anxious first half performance, the Huskies tallying three here in the second half. And two of those coming from Reese Bettinger. Now a chance for Howes running into the box. Volleys for Tedder. Beat the keeper and in. Consolation goal for Oregon State, but Scott Tedder, who's been quiet for much of the game, gets one for OSU, his fifth of the season. Well-deserved goal there with the pressure. And it was a great uh, little pass from uh, uh, Greg Howes, who's been an impressive player today. Clipped it in nicely with his left foot, and uh, Kedder comes running in and uh, easily scores uh, into an open net. Nice volley by Howes, a little bit of a collision as well. Tedder putting that one in. For Howes, it's going to leave him just one assist short, apparently, of uh, the tying for first in Oregon State career history. And for Tedder, the junior from Marist High School, as you see, his fifth goal of the year, the seventh of his career. So he's had a productive season. Greg Howes plays real easy. He's touch on the ball, he's outstanding. Uh, short passes, long passes, good composure, and you won't see better composure than that little, le lovely little deft uh, left foot little lobbing pass into the, into, into the feet of, uh, of Kedda. And again, to go back to Howes, as I mentioned before, he's making some of those career marks in just two seasons of play at Oregon State, so testament to the offensive capability, and this year top ten in all three categories, points, goals, and assists in the MPSF. And that's on a team that hasn't done really well. Look at him now. He's going now because he's he's, he's real happy. He got, he got an assist there. Samoza back in here for Grazier in the closing moments for Washington. And, and I think that's the indication of a good player when they play easy. He plays so easy. So does Benjamin Samoza plays easy. Then when they need that other gear, they've got it to go into. It's ex especially exciting for me to see a player that plays with such poise. Gomez trying to find Bettinger, put it a little bit too strong, and again, with Hill playing near the top of the box, there's no way Reese will get to that one in time. Another nice bit of control here by Wheeler. Tedder going to take one. Why not? Nearly got it to the back post. <laughs> Oregon State have finished... Uh, uh, this game with uh, the best offense of, of the whole game, actually. And, uh, uh, very competitive game. Uh, good victory for the Huskies, but have to work real hard for it in the end. Yep, good omens in the future, especially offensively, for Dana Taylor's Oregon State Beavers as he shakes the hand of Dean Wurzberger and the Huskies. Cap an undefeated league season. Reese Bettinger gets his first two goals of the year, both in the second half, to help propel the Huskies past the Beavers by a 4-2 to two score. We'll have more from Seattle and wrap up today's contest between the Oregon State Beavers and the Washington Huskies in just a moment. You're watching NCAA Men's Soccer on Fox Sports Net.
And as autumn takes hold around the Pacific Northwest, the Washington Huskies close out their regular season with a victory over the Oregon State Beavers, 4-2 the final score today. As the Huskies finish their regular season 12-4-2, the Beavers at 5-12 in Dana Taylor's first campaign. The Huskies scoring in the first minute off Casale from the free kick. Carroll and a pair from Bettinger, but not before Kirk had countered in the first half to make it 1-1 at the break, and then Tedder getting the late goal off the little volley on the assist from Howes. And Allen, a couple of key goals for Washington in the second half, the first one from Kai Carroll. Well, the second goal was a very, very beautiful goal. Uh, Benjamin Samoza went right around the corner here, down the right, great speed. Uh, Matt Olson chasing him. The ball went through Matt Olson's legs. Uh, good cross from Samoza. Kai Carroll in the perfect position to easily score in the far post. Bettinger scored off a little header on the assist from Foise, and, and then this, the two linked up this again. This was a great combination play between Bettinger and Foise. Foise returned a compliment to Bettinger, who gleefully scored his second goal of the season. He's got the monkey well and firmly off his back now, and uh, he's looking forward to getting more goals in the tournament for the Huskies. And again, the Huskies face either UCLA or Cal State Fullerton Wednesday at 1 o'clock here at the Husky Soccer Field. Come out and see a great game if you have the opportunity. So for Alan Hinton, I'm Todd Pickett saying so long from the Husky Soccer Field. Our final score today, Washington 4, Oregon State 2. So long, everybody.